What's up guys? It's Jake here from Chief Live Gaming. Today a quick video I want to showcase to you guys some Death Shroud conversions I've been working on. Uh, I wanted to get your feedback, your uh, tips, tricks, whatever you think uh, these models need, whatever um, ideas you might have before I start painting them and kind of continue work. So, uh, the, the idea here with these models is we have Tartaros Terminators, which is what the Death Shroud models are based off of, and the Death Guard Legion Power Scythe upgrade packs from Forge World. So these are newer kits that uh, give you the option to get Power Scythes to put on your uh, Marines. So we've combined the Tartaros Terminators from Burning of Prospero with this upgrade kit and uh, kind of come up with some Death Shroud here. So basically there were a lot of little roadblocks and nuances that I, I did to these models to bring them up to the level I was kind of happy with. Uh, when I just put the size on the Tartaros models, I was not happy with how they looked. They did not look like Death Shroud. They kind of... Um, they didn't look beefy enough, they didn't look scary enough, you know, they just didn't quite look right. So I took it, you know, that was my original plan, was just to see how they looked and kind of go from there. So uh, the main couple things that I did to this model, or to these models rather, was uh, I added these uh, medallions here on the shoulder pads. So the Death Shroud have much bigger medallions like this than the stock Tartaros Terminators. So the, the way I made those, real simple, was uh, off of the, the brass etch from Forge World. Uh, it comes with like this this whole row down here, this section uh, was full of kind of ones like this. So I very simply uh, just cut off the spikes around the outside of it and then I was given uh, left with some circles and I did that you know ten times to get five different sets and that's what we did to get these medallions. And then the next big thing was to get this cool icon on the shoulder, which is, is exactly this on the Death Shroud kits. Uh, it's just a little bit more extruded than the Brass Etch, and I couldn't really think of a good way to make these pop up more on these models. So what I did was I just put the Brass Etch on there, and hopefully uh, when I paint it, it will look good enough and you know not really uh, be a concern. So those were kind of the main dress up sort of things I did in the beginning. From there I put the scythes on uh, and this was tricky because when you buy the the scythe upgrade pack it comes with arms but it only comes with power armored arms which do not look right on terminators. So uh, basically what I did is I had two packs you get two one-handers in each pack of five so I took the four one-handers that were in my possession and I used those simply because I would need to do less uh, conversion work to get them onto the Terminator platforms. So I, I just kind of attached, you can see again, this is the one two-hander that I had to use. And I just kind of had some spare Termi arms laying around from different kits that I used. I couldn't tell you exactly what they were actually supposed to be used for. But you kind of, you know, chop it at the wrist and line it up. And then uh, I chose to do a little bit of green stuff on some of them just to build up the wrist a little more because there was kind of a a uh, difference in the size of the hand and the wrist it just didn't look quite right so on some of those I did on some of them I didn't like this one I was happy with the size of the the hand and and for some reason these left-handed size had bigger hands on them I don't know what Forge World was doing there uh, like you can see it might be a difficult thing to tell on the camera but if you look at the size of the hand on this scythe and then this scythe it's like way different so um yeah, no green stuff needed on these, I felt, and then just built a little bit up there. Now, that's how we got the size on there. That was fine. Then I was thinking, you know, these guys all have hand flamers. We've got to have hand flamers on these kits. Not only so uh, my opponent knows that there's hand flamers, but so I remember to use them because I always forget. So <laughs> what I did... Uh, you guys probably can pick out what bit this is. If we look here, this is a smoke launcher from a Rhino that I cut in half and then just simply glued to the wrist. So we got um, the two kind of barrels here. I thought it looks okay. It's a little big, 
but again, you know, it's a reminder that they're there, and it doesn't look too big. I think the scale is about right. It's kind of like a storm bolter size. So, you know, it's it's fine. It's okay. And then what I did was put a just a tube with a green stuff. Maybe I'll zoom in. There we are. A tube. I drilled a small hole just like I was going to pin it through the back. A small hole underneath the shoulder pad there, kind of as close as I could get it. And then uh, made kind of a connective pipe or a tubing system just to give it, dress it up a little more, make it look a little more complete. Uh, because without it, it was kind of um, lacking something. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, you guys are probably going to ask how I made these tubes. That is with the Green Stuff Tentacle Maker Kit. So uh, it's just like a roller that you use to roll out, like you make a worm out of Green Stuff and then roll it between two plates and it gives you these uh, ridges and impressions to make tubes or tentacles out of. And uh, it turned out really well. I've used a different, just real quick, one of those before, not by Green Stuff Industries, and it didn't work very well. Definitely recommend buying the one that's actually made by Green Stuff Industries because it just works so much better. I can't tell you why, it just does. Uh, so <laughs> that's my recommendation if you guys are looking to make uh, tubes like this. You know, this is the smallest size. You can also make, I have one, I think this is the biggest size of groove that you can make. So, you know, we've got a lot of different um, variety. There's three different sizes of uh, tube or tentacle that you can make. So. Anyway, I was pretty happy with that, but then I was looking at the Death Shroud kits, uh, pictures of them, wherever I could find them, and I, I still felt they were missing something. So, like, if we look at this guy right here as he sits, you know, he's still, he looks pretty cool, right? Um, he's just missing a little something extra, and what I discovered that it was, was if we look here at this guy, he's got this little um, kind of like a rebreather apparatus, in the center of his chest with some pipes going into his uh, his back area. And that's on the, the Death Shroud kits. That's what they have. I don't know how the pipes connect in the back, but I kind of just found a gap between the uh, waist and the, the chest piece drilled in. Kind of same thing. Maybe you can see if I tilt it just a little. And uh, connected them there and made this little rebreather thing. And I really think that rounded off the kit and gave them that little extra bulk that I was looking for, that little extra oomph to the model. And uh, really, I think that's all that I want to do. Um, so this would be basically a, a finished conversion. I really kind of mucked up this brass edge on the shoulder there, but hopefully I can fix it a little bit as we continue this conversion process. So. The way I made this rebreather, uh, that's what I'm going to call it, on this chest, was uh, I was looking through my bits and I had some uh, backpacks from some berserkers, I think, like old berserkers. And basically I just, you know, you can pretty clearly see right here that I just chopped the backpack off right there, that vent, and then kind of slimmed it down a bit more so that it would uh, bolt onto the chest. I made a nice flat carving out of the, the chest plate so it would meet up and then glued it on, drilled the two holes in, and ran the piping. So that's what we ended up with. I think it'll look really cool with this venting here on the chest. I, I faced it up because I figured I could do a really cool OSL effect, maybe some some bright green glow or even a different color. Um, because I'm going to do green on the eyes, and I have the shoulder pads really green. If you guys look at, um, crap, something like this. This is kind of the color I do my, my shoulders and my eyes. So they are pretty bright. So maybe I'll do a red glow from this rebreather. I just think it'd be really, whoops, really cool to have a uh, OSL effect coming from this chest centerpiece. So... Let me know what you guys think. Uh, that's where we're at. Again, any suggestions, comments, uh, criticism, whatever that you guys have about the uh, conversions so far. I would love to hear your ideas, your thoughts, and I'm going to let these sit for 
uh, a few days while I read the comments and let you guys kind of watch the video and let it simmer. And if you do have any suggestions, please, again, let me know. And I imagine that you guys will come up with some pretty neat things that I have not thought of. So, again, thank you guys. Uh, we are at 900, over 900 subscribers, guys. That is so amazing. I'm doing a giveaway at 1,000 subs. It's going to be something cool. It's going to be a fully painted model. It's not going to be a small infantry model. It is a pretty cool... I'm not, I don't want to give it away. I feel like I'm going to if I keep talking. So just know it's going to be a fully painted giveaway of, of a model that uh, should be awesome for you guys. So uh, share the channel. Tell your friends. A thousand subs. We're going to do that giveaway. And uh, let's just keep it on, uh, keep on going, guys. So thanks again for watching. Leave your comments down in the description or in the comment box below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.